You're welcome. Ahead of the November 11 Biosol governorship election, uh, Wamate Jones Idikyo of the Accord Party. Yes, the Accord Party is primed to face some political rivals. An incumbent, Doye Diri of the People's Democratic Party, former Minister of uh, State for Petroleum Resources, former Governor of Biosol State, Timipre Silva of the All Progressives Congress. Idikyo will also be facing Subri uh, Waibode Joseph of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Osuluku Binalayefa of the Social Democratic Party, Simon Imotimi, Karioru of the Zenith Labour Party, and of course, Kalango Davis of the African Democratic Congress. Some big names amongst the collection of names there. Uh, the election is delicately poised between the more powerful parties, but Wamate, John Sidiq, says he's standing or believes he's standing to push his candidacy and desire to improve the present and the future of Bayelsa State and Politics HQ tonight. I'm glad to see I have with me Barrister Wamate Jones Idikio, governorship candidate of the Accord Party in the upcoming Bayelsa State governorship election. Barrister Wamate, good evening. Good evening, Kofi. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot to talk about. I, yes, we have a lot to talk about. Why are you running for the office of Governor of Bielsa State? You're a businessman. You have been the DG of the Bielsa um, Chamber of Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Commerce Industry, Mines and Agriculture, put it loosely. So, so why are you leaving your corporate world, your business, to go into politics? Well, thank you, Kofi. That is a million dollar question. And I think that um, it's worth asking. Now, I'll just point you to two things. Bielsa State, like Nigeria, is huge on potential. But there has been not sufficient exploitation of the resources that we have to create wealth for the people. And without wealth, there is no development. Without development, you run the risk of loss of insecurity. So I have a very simple mandate that I've given to myself, which is to say, we be building a strong, virile, and sustainable economy for my state. That is my sole singular objective for running for government. Thank you. Interesting. Building a viral economy for Bielsa State. You've been part of some initiatives. Um, uh, um, I mean, it's my, my own background is research and all that. You were part of a, a committee set up to look at education policies in Bielsa State, if I'm not mistaken. The government was part of it, Bielsa State. Um, you've been part of the startup ecosystem in Bielsa State and the startup bill, which is um, called the approval of government. So it's a government bill basically. Um, you also a private sector person at the Bielsa Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, and I'm sure here you have interactions with government. Shouldn't a guy like you be partnering with the government to say, I can be commissioner, I can be a consultant, I can partner with the government to drive government to where uh, it needs to be? Well, that's a great question, um, but let me answer that in this regard. Um, maybe I should just mention what my vision is. And my vision is to make Bios State the fastest growing economy by the year 2030. And I have a mission statement that I want to impact, improve the standard of living of one million Bios by the end of four years. Is that possible? Super possible. Why would I need to be governor to do that? That is the forefront of policy decision making at its best. As commissioner, I only drive the vision. As a visioner, I drive my vision. That is the simple answer to your question. Thank you. Hmm. All right. Um, what are what are your top three? You've talked about your vision, but give me three top three priorities if you're elected as governor of Bielsa State. Uh, 
economy is very, very critical. Now you look around the entire country, I can bet that there is not a single state that boasts an economy for itself. All states in the Federation basically run on the federal allocation that comes to it, with which you know, salaries are paid and things are done. But if we run an economy, we create internal wealth. And the critical thing for creating wealth is to ensure that we have resident capital, which is lacking, especially in a state like by our state. So I'll give you three major things that I'll do. First, under the economy, the first critical thing to do would be to set up or to establish a trade policy. Under the trade policy, we will be localizing production. Do we have areas of comparative advantage which we can exploit and to ensure that biosans participate in local production? It is through production that we can create wealth. And then under that, while we localize production, we'll also ensure that we make biosustain a trade hub. And through that, we ensure that local, Niger- local biosans buy local. We produce local, we create a trade hub, and we buy local. That way, we create that resident capital because we must ensure that finances generated within biosustain can circulate within biosustain for as long as possible to ensure that every single person who is in the production can maximize the use of that finance for a longer period. Number two, we will establish an industrial policy. On that industrial policy, we are giving ourselves a mandate to ensure that we build one technologically driven industry every year for four years. Those industries will be responsible for creating jobs and employment. I'll give you this instance. If you look at the economies of Nigerian states, why is it that we have poverty around us? It is one simple reason. There has been no middle income earners over the past couple of decades in Nigeria. Okay, so you basically have the low income earners and the high and in- high income earners. So what do we do with the middle income? That is the creation of wealth. That is the stabilization of the society that we require. So the industries will cater to those sectors of the economy that would provide or be quickly um, provide job jobs and employment for the people. And then thirdly, we'll be looking at those areas of the economy, which is called the growth pole policy. Which business, which, which industry has the capacity to, you know, affect several other areas and economies in the economy to provide the critical wealth experience that we desire? And then the third thing we'll do is to have an investment policy. The investment policy will show those areas would provide the incentives that are required for creating a, you know, an environment for businesses to thrive and, you know, and prosper. You talked about the startup, you know, a bill, which is very critical. If we stood for Nigeria, if we stood for people to start businesses and be able to grow their businesses, the more the businesses prosper, the more employment is generated, the more income is generated. That way you can ensure that people, you know, would transit from being poor to becoming middle income, and they can also from middle income transit to the income end interesting. Of, of society. All right. And uh, so uh, these are three key three, areas. Three key areas. Interesting. You've already talked about unemployment, so I won't go there. Uh, but you okay. asked, uh, Barista, asked for your top three priorities if elected governor by LCST. The first you talked about uh, uh, production, making Biosa production hub. Um, what can Biosa produce? Um, Biosa is not one of the states known for much outside oil and gas, um, you know. Uh, what can Biosa produce that 
it has a comparative advantage in that other states may not be able to beat it at. Okay, thank you. You know, this is one area that Bielsa has been shortchanged in the past several decades. Now, I'll mention one simple thing that you know. Bielsa State has the longest coastline in the country with 185 kilometers of coastline. That opens us up to the Atlantic. And what does that provide for us? The blue economy. Again, we have about 13 or more rivers, rivulets, and creeks and streams. It opens us to a huge volume of capture fish. So agriculture is key for us. We can prosper through agriculture, through aquaculture, through fish fishing. Now, over that statistic of having 185 kilometers of coastline, Bielsa State has the potential of producing about 120 thousand tons of capture fish annual and i can tell you that we haven't produced as much as 20 or 30 thousand tons of fish annual beyond that there are huge potentials for aquaculture we can do cage fishing and from fishing what do we get we can diversify into the value chain of the fish industry we can provide fish oil for the pharmaceutical industry. We can can fish for export. That by itself is just one area of the economy I'm talking about. Right. But again, we have potentials for producing palm oil, which is a huge staple for Nigeria. And I can tell you that that's a huge area of advantage that we have. That's over about 30, over 30, 000, over 30 hectares of government-owned palm plantation. And then you have smallholder palm plantations spread out across the state. Again, Bielsa State is in the Niger Delta. And you know we have the capacity to produce rice in three cycles in the year. We have the very famous Peramagri rice field that is known even by the federal government. We have other rice fields across the state. Burma produces rice as we speak. You have Otokwati, well over a thousand hectares. You have in Sampo, East Sampo, another about a thousand two hundred okay. hectares. I, 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 th I think you've been able to give us um, enough enough to last by us as the, by, to give by us as something to think about. <laughs> Barisa, let's move on to some other questions for the want of time. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I asked for your top three priorities. You talked about, you know, uh, making biosystem production help. You talked about um, industrialization, you know, and that can even solve the question of unemployment. You talked about uh, having an investment policy. Um, it seems you, because you're a business guy, I mean, you are the DG. I don't know if you're still the DG of the Biosystem State Chamber of, uh, um, uh, of Commerce, Industry, Mines, and Agriculture, but... I haven't heard you talk about health care. I haven't heard you talk about infrastructure. I haven't heard you talk about education, um, which are critical areas. If you want to improve investment, it could be argued that investors will only come when there's infrastructure to be able to absorb them. Um, so are, is it that these areas are not important and not priority to you? Um, what are your plans to improve health care in Bielsa State? What are your plans to improve the state's infrastructure? The last time I went into Yenogoa, um, some years ago, it was one road, one road in, one road out. That was the only road I saw, the major road. I hear there are one or two other ones now. But Bayasa is not, nothing more than Yenugua. It's a one city state. Okay, so what are your plans to improve the state's infrastructure and to absorb what the investment you want? Um, what are your plans for education? What are your plans for health care? Sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I started with the economy. And from my intro, I mentioned that the economy is very key to building virtually every other sector of the economy, every other sector of government. Now, education. Education is key. Now, my, 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 my you know, previous experiences in education shows that at the primary school and the secondary school levels, a lot would be done by digitizing learning. 
That has been started. And we're going to spread digitization. Under the present circumstances, classes are held in the four corners of school. But we're going to move beyond just the four corners of school to ensure that digitized learning goes and children can learn. Two, we will revolutionize the learning curriculum in all the schools, from primary schools to secondary schools and tertiary institutions. We have just one polytechnic in Biosa State. And people would tend to think that one polytechnic is sufficient. I've had criticisms that we have three universities within Biosa State, and that's sufficient. Of course not. We, need, we will be revolutionizing science, technology, engineering, and maths curriculum from the primary schools through the secondary school. And that is a key area in education, beyond building schools across the state, which is something that can happen over and again. But the key part of education is the curriculum, the learning curriculum. You talked about infrastructure. Infrastructure is key. But infrastructure is brought about by finances. And all too often you discover that government from the past have had budgets for infrastructural development. But it all falls short, not because of lack of intention, but because of the finances, the funds that are available to run that. So we have a map. First, we will start with, we'll start with urban renewal of the landscape within Bios State. We will ensure that internal roads have standard structures. We will ensure that the connections of roads across the state, which has been something that has been you know, populated from governments in the past, roads to brass, roads to the hinterland. Yes, we will, we will follow through with what is continuing. That is with infrastructure. Number two, again, we will ensure that there are housing programs for people. We will not deal with low-cost houses. We will deal with standard structures and housing. If you go through Biosa State, you see a lot more of bungalows and all that kind of building. And that's why Biosa has a housing deficit of over 54,000 houses year on year that have not been met. So we will, we will, we will prioritize having high-rise buildings that will cater to the number of people that are in the state. We'll provide standard structures that will ensure that the standard of living is high or you know, progressive. So with infrastructure, yes, we'll ensure that infrastructure is dealt with. But I will return again to mention that without a critically sustainable economy, infrastructure would serve very little purpose for the people beyond the roads that will connect the people to the hinterland from the city center and bringing people to the city center. If we do not ensure, we do not have the policies to provide right. the jobs okay. that people would begin to flow in from the hinterland, from the rural area. Don't forget that rural urban drift will happen the moment you create those infrastructures mm -hmm. and there should be enough jobs both in the city center and perhaps the rural area to take care of all of this. So centrally, the economy still plays huge role in the development, both infrastructure, creating the educational environment that we desire. All right, uh, again, Mr. Mr. DQ, because of time, I, I want to ask you the, the, yes, because of time, I want to ask you some more questions because we're really running out of yes, time. No economy in Nigeria, especially in the South-South, can, in any, anywhere in the world, can attract investment because you're a very pro-business. Um, you know, you've even tied health, quality of health care to, to business. Um, no, no, no economy can have a, a good business climate environment to attract investment without security. We all know the history of security in, in the Niger Delta, in Bayelsa State, in neighboring River State. Uh, what, what, what is your... What are your thoughts on the state's current security situation, and what will you do to make Bielsa State safer? I'll say it in two simple words. Everywhere in the South-South, 
essentially, what you have is not so much as a security problem, but the issue with law and order. Now, take for instance, a simple KK driver drives against traffic and he goes cut free. A taxi driver runs against traffic, he goes cut free. That is law and order, isn't it? Now, if there is not adequate punishment for waiting simple you know, law and order prescription. And then you have issues of security breaches. Now, to cater up to this, we have taken, you know, charge and we, we, we will be, you know, uh, uh, instituting what we call the broken windows policy. We start with law and order. If a man knows that if he drives against traffic, he'll pay, it will be much more difficult for him to engage in crime, you know, because the 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 the, uh, uh, the 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 punishment policy is there against you know that. Now, with regards to crime proper, we will ensure that we have digitally monitored environments, not just beyond beyond CCTV cameras in our street. We know the flashpoints within Bielsa State, for instance. We will digitally monitor every flashpoint in Bielsa State, especially the city center. And then, connected to that, we will have centrally monitored environments where real-time, on-time images of the flashpoint are okay. provided for the security apparatus to okay. deal with. Okay. And that way, we can preempt crime, and we can deal with it in real time. So you're, you're, you're looking at leveraging on technology to secure Bielsa State. It, it's quite interesting. I'm so sorry for the interjections there. Um, what is the current IGR of Bielsa State? Bielsa State is one of the states that has the highest allocation, gets allocation from, uh, uh, um, you know, from uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the crude oil resources Nigeria has, uh, the derivation, and of course gets its usual share of the national cake as well. Um, what is the current IGR? Yet yeah, the state is in debt, and sometimes we hear about how the government is unable to pay, you know, salaries. Um, IGR is very important. What is the current IGR of Bielsa State, and what is your plan um, to get it up? To get it up. Secondly, what is the current debt profile of Bielsa State? What is your plan to get it down? Very briefly, please. Thank you very much, and that's a very critical area of discussion. IGR is very critical. I think the IGR in Bielsa State is about a billion, a little less than that. And if you put that you know, together, it brings you just about 12 billion per hour, and that's very low with regards to the kind of you know, government that should be run. So again, I'll fall back to the economy. If you don't have a very strong economy, your IGR certainly will not rise. Now, if we need to talk about economy, building the IGR of the state, without talking about the economy, for instance, that I'm talking about raising, then it, we, we, we would prioritize the centralization of the collection of taxes to rates and levies. And I can tell you, being in the private sector has shown me a lot of things that are amiss over the years. Now, if you drive into Bell Files State, you will see huge columns of trucks that are bringing in goods and services into the state. All of them are. But what does the tax money do? So, again, if we ensure that the economy must grow, then we must ensure that there is centralized taxing system. We will reduce multiple taxation so that businesses will grow to ensure that they pay appropriate taxes. We will review the tax rates in the state and ensure that taxes paid appropriate and when there is no multiple taxation, you will ensure that the people will be willing to pay. Again, two things. You have a huge volume of people who trade in the informal sector. All right, I I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 Barista, I'm so sorry because of time. I've just been uh, notified that we are out of time. Um, but you've answered the questions um, you know, uh, so eloquently. We want to thank you very much. I mean, you have a, a tall order because you have two 
uh, giants in uh, you know in the political game. Talking about the incumbent governor Diri and the former minister of state for petroleum resources, um, uh, Timmy Press Silva. But we wish you all the best. Um, as we wish every other candidate the best, and we hope to have you again sometime soon.